Welcome back, you guys, as we are here discussing about Lamar Jackson and him technically being on the hot seat. So let's think about it. Let's put some context behind the great Lamar Jackson that everyone known and loves. If you're a fan of Baltimore, you guys know what you guys have in the quarterback. Um, the problem is a lot of the information that has been going on with Lamar has kind of like been pieced and has been like leaked or talked about in different segments. And unfortunately, it hasn't given the right information in the right timeline to construct the right way of looking at the whole aperture of Lamar Jackson. First off, do you now believe that Lamar Jackson is on the hot seat? Now, when I say the hot seat, what, let's discuss – um, the current signing that just happened, which was with Odell Beckham Jr. last night. With Odell being um, signed, uh, I think it puts the ball back in Lamar Jackson's um, territory to say, hey, um, I need to sign. Now, mind you, like he isn't signed by Baltimore, he can sit out if he wants to and, and miss a year and see how that would uh, just waste $18 million, I mean $15 million worth of Baltimore's money if he decided to kind of just stick it to them. That way if he wanted to, you know, make them uh, financially hurt uh, when they're not um, making those type of moves. So let's think about it. Everyone got upset that Lamar Jackson – uh, got slapped with the unexclusive franchise tag. That's first. Um, unfortunately, the information that didn't come out was that uh, Lamar did go to the organization on March 2nd, which was five days prior to them franchise tagging him, uh, to uh, say, hey, I want to trade. So when a player wants a trade um, and they kind of still hold all the cards uh, for Lamar Jackson – what do you think was going to happen? Did you think they were going to decide to give him a, you know, $40 million plus type of contract? No, the organization is going to be like, why am I going to invest money in you when you want to trade? And now you've told us you don't want to be here. So it was kind of ingenious on Baltimore side to say, Hey, all right, we're going to give you the unexclusive franchise tag at $32 million and see if you really are worth what you are wanting in money. So I don't think it was ever about the money, if you think about it. If you asked for a trade and they gave you a subsequent offer, was it about the money or was it about something else? Were you upset that Deshaun Watson got more money? Were you upset that Kyler Murray got a contract extension? Were you upset that Russell Wilson got a contract extension before you did? Yes, Lamar Jackson is a unanimous MVP. But is he actually worth the money? Is he considered a top 10 quarterback in the AFC conference, call me crazy, but let's think about it. Is he worth it? You know, um, unfortunately, he didn't do the right thing, which was get proper representation. And the fact that, you know, people are going out there saying, hey, I, rep I represent Lamar Jackson. But the league has said, if you are not a contracted NFL agent, you cannot act on behalf of said player. Because if you think about it, the organization will lose a pick. And we already know how that's happened. Look what happened to the Miami Dolphins with, uh, you know, the Tom Brady situation that happened that season. So let's think about that. All right. So he doesn't have the representation. He didn't do – he should have probably talked to LeBron and said, hey, how do you do this? Because Lamar, because uh, LeBron James did the correct thing, which was invest in his inner circle to 
uh, get people certified like Rich Paul to be a NFL agent and have his own firm. Now, if Lamar Jackson would have done that in with his mother or with other people within his organization, then he wouldn't be in the position he is right now and having to go back and forth with the organization. If Lamar Jackson would have done the right thing and at least have gotten some type of agent to act on his behalf, and yes, he doesn't want to pay the money. I understand. But at the end of the day, you said, hey, I am a franchise quarterback. Okay, why do you want to sit in front of other people that control the money? You know, why don't you want a team-friendly deal like a Patrick Mahomes that could benefit you in the long run. If if an individual takes major, uh, majority of your cap, how are they supposed to put people around you when they fail to put people around you to begin with? You know, uh, it's been said time and time again that other organizations or other players don't want to come play with you due to the fact that the type of offense that is run with a run-centric offense but how did Devontae Adams decide to go to the Raiders and go play with uh, with Carr? Yes, they are friends. Yes, they are roommates in college. Is that beneficial? I think so. I think relationships do matter when it comes to those things. So if you look at that, at that entrance in the way that it should, do you believe that there are actual top-tier wide receivers that do want to play with Lamar? I mean, Odo Obo Beckham Jr. is past his prime. He hasn't played in the league in a year. Yes, he is going to be rusty. But guess what? Lamar still has to sign the dotted line. Now, if Lamar does decide to sign, will he play out the whole year? Or would he decide to, like people have said, fake a fake injury? But if you fake a fake injury, what does that say about you? But also, what does that say about you as an individual? Yes, you're trying to protect yourself and you're trying to protect your money. I totally understand that. And you were still on your rookie contract. And you have LaShawn McCoy now saying that Jalen Hurts should take a team-friendly deal. And not Baltimore with Lamar. How can you sit there and tell me? that it's okay for Jalen Hurts to go take a friendly team deal. But Lamar and I, you can't take a team friendly deal. You need all your money. Now, I'm not here to judge you based upon, yes, you want all the money. Yes, you think you should get paid more than Deshaun Watson. But in the case, is Baltimore in the same position of what Baltimore, of what the Browns were in, which is a desperate organization? I don't think Baltimore's ever been a desperate organization I don't think Baltimore's ever let a player, I would say, in my words, punk them to give them the contract they want. You have to remember that Joe Flacco got paid based upon winning the Super Bowl and got that $100 million plus contract and was the highest quarterback paid at that time. Lamar, have you made an AFC championship? No, you haven't. Has your counterparts have? Yes. Has the Bills Josh Allen has? Yes, he's made it to the AFC Conference Championship. Has Joe Burrow? Yes, and he's also made it to the Super Bowl as well. Yes, he lost, but guess what? He still made it. Um, and then you have your up-and-comers, Justin Herbert. That supposedly uh, might be getting a contract extension. We're not sure if he's going to get a contract extension, but they did put some more players around him. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Austin Eckler is possibly leaving that organization though as well too. Um, and then Joe Burrow has said that he is radio silent and he is not discussing his contract uh, out in public. Now I think, th- which is interesting about this, because if you think about it, if – he's able to do this and they're able to go ahead and keep everything in house. How do you think that helps the organization? I think that builds more trust in the organization, more trust in Joe Burrow. And hopefully he does take the, the contract he needs, but then also too, he leaves enough on the table for his players to also get resigned. 
like uh, T. Higgins, that's going to need to get signed this year. And then also uh, Jamar Chase right after that. Uh, Joe Mixon already got paid, but, you know, he's got other issues. But let's go back to Lamar. Um, if, if you're out there, what do you guys think is going to help Lamar Jackson? How do we help Lamar Jackson? How can Lamar Jackson help himself um, with being on this hot seat now that, hey, now they have committed – $15 million to Od- Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, and also got him another wide receiver as well in uh, in Nelson as well. So how do you help him? How do you make him a, make him understand that he needs to take some type of deal or even just sign the current deal he has? Do you, do you help and say, hey, this is what we need to do? Or do you continue to just uh, hope that he does take the $32 million and plays and try to work out some long-term extension deal. Um, I mean, I think it would benefit him to take the deal, um, but the draft is right around the corner as well, too, and Baltimore has said that they are uh, not ruling out the fact of drafting a quarterback. If they draft a quarterback... Uh, how does that make Lamar Jackson feel? Does he feel upset about it? Would he would he demand a trade more publicly? Um, or would he just not even show up? But I don't think showing up and I don't and I don't think sitting out is gonna help his um, draft stock. Cause with the news dropping just a little bit ago, Cliff Kingsbury going to USC to coach the quarterbacks, which is Caleb Williams, uh for another year, um, I mean, the Ravens could tank and go get Caleb Williams and have another um, bright new quarterback under contract, under a rookie contract, and not have to pay him anything and try to put more more pieces around possibly Caleb Williams because they could tank. Um, but also, too, the uh, AFC division that he's in is a tough division to begin with. You know, if you look at uh, Deshaun Watson's going to be in that new uh, system for a whole another year. Um, you know, he's probably getting a lot of offseason reps, and he's probably trying to make a comeback and show that he's still an elite player that he was like he was in Houston. Uh, you look at uh, Kenny Pickett with the Steelers; um, he could possibly make some noise as well too. I mean, we saw towards the end of the year he was uh, he was running it. He is not afraid to to whip it. And even if you look at um, uh, Baltimore in their situation. Now I know they they, I just man, it just doesn't just sit well with me. I just don't know like what is it, what what does Baltimore do? Do they just wait out and say, hey, Lamar, what are you gonna do? But I think right now Baltimore holds the cards. I think um, as they continue to possibly even go into draft and try to find some some wide receiver talent for him to really f- show him that he. And the organization, or the organization, is showing him that hey, that they're putting in much talent around him. If they can, it, man, if they could steal a wide receiver, or they could steal a solid tight end for him, uh, that that could possibly turn this this whole thing around for uh, Lamar. And I think it could it, it could be better for him in his situation. Uh, but the market is not helping him. You, you know, people can say that the NFL is colluding. I mean, you have to be able to prove it with not, without a shadow of a doubt that the organization is colluding. I don't think they are. I think it's a. I think it's a bigger than what it is, and I think it could be. Uh, it, it could hinder him, and I think it's hindering his draft stock. And and when I mention draft stock, I don't mean I, I mean like his money, unfortunately. So let's let, let's hope and see what the mark does in the next couple of days. See if he does decide to uh, to sign the tag and see if you know because he did say hey. Uh, I am gonna I, I am gonna come out and play uh, with OBJ, but it's hard to say that when you haven't signed your contract offer. Um, now they give him three years for one thirty three. They did offer that to him. Maybe he says, "Hey man, you give me three years for one fifty, and I'll sign right now." Um, but I don't know how much how much draft um, or, or how much money that would leave them in cap space. Um, especially with them paying a lot of their players just recently on a rookie on the uh, defense side of the ball to see how that goes. So with with, with Lamar, what's um, 
let's see what happens uh, on these next couple of days and, and uh, keep it uh, moving. So uh, this is just my little take on on the Mar Jackson situation. If you guys uh, if you guys want to leave some comments and, and and let me know if I'm if I'm wrong or if I'm like out there, but uh, I, I think I'm pretty spot on on what's going on, and I just think it's a back and forth game between the organization and uh, Lamar. And Lamar has to remember too; they've only paid one quarterback uh, in the past twenty years, Joe Flacco. So. They value the quarterback position, but I don't think they value it as much as Lamar thinks he does. They do because uh, they, I mean, they have two Super Bowls. It's it's hard to it's hard to say that the quarterback position is the most important position for at least Baltimore, just due to the fact because they've been able to do it with average play at the quarterback position and being able to lean on that defense to do as much damage as they've been able to do. Uh, that's that's my biggest take on on that end there. Um, so let's let's see what he does, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, this is just my take, you guys. I uh, appreciate you guys if you guys tuned in. I appreciate you guys' support like always. And uh, like always, keep it frosty, my friends.